Hey everyone, I'm Ranger Allie, and with me today is Ranger Margo, who's a dear friend of mine here in Shenandoah. And just this past weekend, we celebrated our annual Wildflower Weekend event. It was really awesome to see all of you out there. You may have been following on our social media pages. We have been reposting some of our wildflower walks that we had last year and the year before because this is the first time in two years we've been able to host the event in the park. And so we're very excited about that. And we still have more videos to come, so be on the lookout. Also what happened this, this past weekend was our Youth Wildflower Art Contest, which Ranger Margo was in charge of. So would you mind sharing a little bit of detail about that? Sure, absolutely. So the Youth Wildflower Art Contest is an annual contest held by Shenandoah National Park that draws submissions from local students grades K through 12, and they submit their art depicting different wildflowers that are found here in Shenandoah National Park. So this year we had a lot of entrants submit their art online, and our judges had a hard time choosing between the amount of really incredible art that was shown there. So yeah. we did pick a few winners, but all of our entrants will receive a special thank you from Shenandoah National Park this year, and we're excited to see what uh, next year's entrance will bring. I actually got to see some of them after the judges had their eyes on them and you guys are incredibly talented. So great job to all of you. Um, we actually do have one of our judges, Betty Gatewood, who is an artist, um, share her thoughts and some of the judges thoughts about all of the submissions. So we're gonna show that to you now. Overall, the ingenuity, the creativity and the emotions that students put in to these illustrations, botanical illustrations, were incredible. The fact that they are doing what they wanted to do in their own creative way, I think has to be uh, a point in their honor and more than just one point. And that is that they are doing art and then letting somebody else look at it. And that is a hard thing to let yourself do. So it's kind of gutsy. Whenever they did have a good composition, I always commented on it. As a matter of fact, all my judging, I congratulate you and I want you to keep painting, keep looking around, keep documenting. In the case that you decide to do this, this painting, this botanical again, I'd suggest that maybe you look in a field guide or look uh, uh, at a resource to make sure that you have it botanically accurate. But in any case, I was just so, pleased with their representation of all the botanical uh, inspiration they got. As we mentioned before, all of our art submissions were so beautiful, but here are the winners for each grade category. First up, kindergarten through second grade. Lucy, who drew a flowering dogwood. So a flowering dogwood is an understory tree that typically blooms from mid-April to mid-May throughout the forests in Shenandoah National Park. Elise, who drew a wake robin. A wake robin is a type of trillium that blooms also from mid-April to mid-May along the forest floors in Shenandoah. Cleo, who drew a coral honeysuckle. Coral honeysuckles are uncommon to find in the mountains of Shenandoah, but when they do bloom, it's throughout June in those secessional habitats and forests, if you want to look for them. And the winners for the grade category third through fifth are Celeste, who created a skunk cabbage. Skunk cabbage is one of the first plants to bloom and a sure sign of spring. It'll even melt the snow around it where it grows in wet and marshy areas. Laura and they painted a service berry tree. So service berry trees typically bloom from early April to early May and those pops of white f blossoms will draw your eye throughout the forest when not a lot of other leaves or flowers have popped up yet. Layton and they painted a blue-eyed grass. So blue-eyed grasses typically bloom from early May to mid-June throughout the park. So keep your eyes peeled this time of year. The winners for sixth through eighth grade are Carter and they drew bloodroot. Bloodroot is also one of the earlier flowers to bloom, typically coming out from early April to early May along shaded forest floors. Cynthia drew common strawberry. So the common strawberry you can look for along the edge of the forest, roadsides, or even in meadow areas. 
This beautiful flowering plant typically blooms from late April to early June. Emma also created blue-eyed grass. Again, those blue-eyed grasses, you can keep your eyes peeled for this beauty this time of year in open forests and meadows. And the winners for 9th through 12th grade are Madeline and they crocheted bloodroot. So that bloodroot is a beautiful flower, but their roots really like shaded forest floors with well-drained soil. But remember that they're protected in the national park. So use this art to imagine what the roots look like and leave them in the ground. Elena created a marsh marigold illustration. So marsh marigolds can be found blooming typically from early April to late May in wet marshy areas throughout the park. And our best in show was created by Camden and they created an illustration of wild columbine. Wild columbine is a gorgeous flower that typically blooms throughout June and July in rocky woods, clearings, and slopes where it can soak up that summer sun. Thank you again to all of our entrants. This was definitely one of the best years we have had with some of the most impressive art that I have ever seen. And congratulations to our 12 winners. We can't wait to see what all of you come up with next year. And hopefully, even those of you who didn't submit some art will be able to come to the park someday soon and check out some of these wildflowers in person for yourselves. Oh yeah, I hope that you all got to do that this past weekend at our wildflower event. Uh, Ranger Carl was actually in charge of all of the events, the programs, the hikes, uh, everything that you may have done over the weekend. And so we really thank him. And he is going to give us our final uh, word on the weekend in this video. So thank you all for joining us and stay tuned for Ranger Carl. Well, Wildflower Weekend was a huge success this year. Of course, a lot of people were excited to come back after a couple years of having Wildflower Weekend virtually. But this year, we had a lot of people brave the weather forecast, great turnout. Um, of course, we had a mixture of guided hikes led not only by guest naturalists and park staff, we also had four art programs demonstrating kind of the wonders and beauty that we can really encapture with the wildflowers this year. And the mountain is certainly alive with a, a span of color. So it's been a really, really great weekend for it.